Dad, the hero, is relaxing in the bathtub, but the next phone call makes him feel vaguely uneasy because his best friend Nick tells him that Nick's wife Laura is cheating on him. Nick is furious when he discovers that Laura has checked into a hotel on a business trip. Nick is so furious that he gets a weapon to get back at his wife. Jack urges Nick to calm down. He doesn't want Nick to do something stupid in the heat of the moment, but Nick tells Jack about the weapon he found. Nick told Jack that his weapon was at Jack's house, which made Jack even more scared, because if Nick did something with the gun, he wouldn't be able to get out of it. No matter what Jack says, it won't destroy the anger in Nick's heart, because at this moment, Nick has followed the clues to find Laura's room, and she had booked another room across the street. But Nick didn't know who was with Laura, so he was going to wait and see who the third party was. But when Jack heard about it, he couldn't take it anymore. He told Nick to calm down. He'd go to him and tell him not to do anything stupid. What Nick didn't know was that the person Laura was with was his best friend Jack. Jack found out and told Laura. Laura was scared and wanted to call the police. But Jack stopped her. If the police were called, Nick would find him. He told Laura to calm down. Jack was thinking about how to leave. At that moment, the doorbell rang. To find out who the third party was, he ordered a meal for Laura's room so as not to blow his cover. Jack had to get Laura to sign for it. He called Nick and delayed him from doing anything stupid. The two got away with it, but Nick would find out sooner or later. Jack tries to escape through the window but he realizes it's the fifth floor and it's not a realistic idea. So Jack came up with another idea. He used the landline in his room to call Nick's room. As soon as Nick picks up the phone in his room, he leaves the room. And when Nick heard the call, he didn't suspect anything and went to answer it. Jack took the opportunity to rush out of the room. The sound of the door closing caught Nick's attention and Jack was about to leave by lift. As the lift had not arrived, Jack was forced to take the fire stairs. Nick opened the door to the corridor and was surprised to see that no one was there. He rushed to the stairway to check. By now Jack had long been hiding. Nick did not find any traces, but had no choice but to go back. Nick came to the corridor of the utility room. Because this is a many years old hotel, not only is there no surveillance equipment here, it's very outdated. Laura, who was watching from the room, noticed a passerby in the corridor. Laura realized that the situation was not good. If Nick met her, if Nick met her, he would mistake her for a third party. In order to protect the passerby, Laura pulls him into the room with no time to explain. Just when the passerby didn't know what to do, Nick had already spotted him and knocked him to the ground instantly. Jack came to the third floor to get help from his ex-girlfriend. Jack was on a date with Laura when he met his ex-girlfriend, who was on a business trip. Her ex-girlfriend is also staying in this hotel. He lied that he was in trouble because he was afraid of being exposed. He asked his ex-girlfriend, Anna, to help him. He prays that Anna will provide him with an alibi so that if anyone asks, he'll say he was with her. Anna still has feelings for Jack so she doesn't hesitate to help him. However, Anna smelled Laura's scent when she hugged Jack. This made Anna realize immediately that Jack was hiding something. She didn't expect Jack to do such a morally corrupt thing, and was so angry that she threw him out of the room. Jack had no choice but to leave the hotel, ready to slip away. He thought that as long as Nick couldn't see him, he should be fine. However, on the other side, the passerby had long been tied up by Nick. In order to prevent detection, Nick also blindfolded the passerby, and emotional, Nick pointed his gun at the passerby and it looked bad. Laura doesn't want to hide this for Jack and is ready to explain, but Nick goes off and sends Laura up in the air. When Jack doesn't get far, he realizes he's made a stupid mistake. He took the wrong phone and left it in Laura's room. If Nick found out, he wouldn't be able to explain himself. Jack had to go back to the hotel because he and Nick had agreed to meet him there. But when Jack rushed back and pretended to look for room 507, Nick pulled Jack into the room. Jack was horrified to see Nick covered in blood. Jack realized that Laura was dead in a pool of blood, but the sound of the gunshots had attracted the attention of the hotel's patrons. The hotel staff was called, but the waiters don't think it's just a noise from outside. Instead, Anna realizes what's happened and rushes upstairs to the room where the shots were heard. Cautious Nick asks Jack to find out who did it. Jack didn't think much of it. Jack doesn't think much of it, but when he realizes it's Anna, he lies and sends her away. Anna has no choice but to leave. Jack finds out from Nick what happened. It turns out that Nick mistook the passerby for a third party, but his identity hasn't been reviewed yet. Now the most crucial thing is to find his mobile phone. At this moment, Nick is also remorseful. But things have come to this point. The first thing to do is to find a way to cover up this matter. Nick has a bold decision. Nick made the bold decision to blame the passersby for Laura's death. It would make it look like a martyrdom and suicide. Nick drew his gun and aimed it at the passerby. But Jack knew the passerby was innocent. So he stepped in and stopped Nick. Nick hands Jack the gun and asks him to help kill the passerby. Jack knows it's a trap for Nick to get him involved in the killing. To get him involved in the killing, 
to get them both on the same page. That way they could be sure that Jack wouldn't turn on him once the plan was in motion. Jack wouldn't do such a stupid thing. He tried to talk Nick out of it. He tried to talk him out of it. In the course of their conversation, Jack overheard his mobile phone. But now that Nick is beside him, there's no chance to pick it up. He could only kick the phone to the bed when Nick wasn't looking. With Jack's persuasion, Nick gradually calmed down. Nick knows that this has nothing to do with Jack. He intends to turn himself in. After all, it's just an accidental manslaughter. It's not too serious. In order not to involve Jack, Nick said he wouldn't tell anyone that Jack had been here. He even carefully wiped Jack's fingerprints off the gun. He saw that Jack's clothes were still stained with blood from his touch. Nick offered to help Jack find clean clothes. As he searched the corridor, he found the hotel staff's uniforms in the utility room. Nick had just left the room when Jack took out his mobile phone. But when he switched on the phone, Jack had a bad feeling about it, because there was a voice message from Nick inside. When he heard the message, Jack was dumbfounded that his identity had been exposed after Laura was accidentally killed by Nick. Nick didn't know what to do. He called Jack for help. To Nick's shot, Jack's mobile phone appeared on his bed. Nick immediately realizes that the third party is no one else but Jack. What Nick didn't realize was that his best friend had cheated on him. Nick came up with a plan to kill two birds with one stone by first leaving a voicemail message for Nick. The voice message consisted of Nick recounting what seemed to have happened to Jack. But Nick doesn't know where Jack is. He was worried, so he had to prove that he had seen Jade. After the recording, Nick was in Laura's room, erasing all traces of him. Then he put on a good show with Jack. The reason Nick wiped the prints off the gun wasn't to help Jack. He just wanted to get his fingerprints off the gun. At that moment, Jack realized he'd fallen into Nick's trap. His fingerprints were all over Laura's room. Even the gun was his, and Anna found him in room 508. Now he can't explain himself by jumping in the river. But just as Nick was about to leave the hotel, he ran into the front desk. Laura had left a message asking for help when she signed for her order. The receptionist realized this and came over to check the situation. But then he bumped into Nick, who was covered in blood. Nick didn't panic at the receptionist. He told the receptionist that there was a murder in the room across the hall. He's just here to catch an adulterer. He wanted the receptionist to erase his stay at the hotel. The receptionist took Nick's money because he'd been betrayed. The receptionist, disgusted by this sort of thing, agreed to Nick's request. Jack realized the situation was bad and prepared to leave. But before he come leave the hotel, an alarm sounds downstairs. Anna, after being dropped off by Jack, Jack's strange behavior, Anna's intuition told him something was wrong. She finally chose to call the police. Jack had no choice but to find Annie again and ask for her help. But seeing the blood on Jack's body, Anna was afraid to open the door. The police soon caught Jack. But Anna became an eyewitness and identified him. When the receptionist opened room 517, it was empty, since the receptionist had already cleaned the room. The police assumed Jack was lying. The receptionist burned Laura's letter asking for help. In an unattended hotel, there was no sign of Nick except the receptionist. Nick strutted out in his hotel staff uniform. Jack pays a terrible price for his behavior. This is the end of the play, directed by Alex Merkin from his 2005 short black thriller of the same name. The play gives us an insight into human nature. The show gives us an insight into the darkness of human nature and high intelligence crime. Nick manages to pin the blame on Danny. We'll see you next time.